Blessed be our God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice with the Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm, and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your body shall flourish like the grass. And it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with the servants, and his indignation is against his enemies. The word of the Lord. Let us read the psalm together, antiphonally by whole verse, beginning on the right side, followed by the left side. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemy stands before you. All the earth bows down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God. How wonderful he is in doing for all people. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they went through the water on foot, and there we rejoiced in him. In his might he rules forever. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in life and will not allow our peace to The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, 
peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us. Amen. So welcome 8 o'clockers and 10 o'clockers to the new 9 a.m. summer service. I am so impressed with you all. You made it. Um, and I will let you know, and I think I've said this maybe a Sunday or two to go, uh, ago, that one of the vestry members brought up a concern when we were discussing the 9 a.m. possibility. And she said... Well, you know, people are going to fight over who sits in their pew because, you know, there's some crossover between 8 and 10 o'clock. Like, is this really going to be a good idea? And I will say, I did not hear any brawling before this morning's service, so it looks like you all have gotten situated. And I noticed that some of you are in your normal place and some of you are trying somewhere new. So, good job. And you might think I'm being silly, but actually the challenge of where we sit, and there have been times when people have been told to move out of a pew in this very church, but where we sit pertains to today's gospel. Because today's gospel is about hospitality. It is about spreading the reign of God, God's love and God's peace, and that doing so is completely dependent on hospitality. Jesus tells the disciples, tells his disciples, not the 12, but the bigger group of disciples, that he's going to send them out in pairs. Now, we know, we know you don't ever do God's work solo, right? You always do it with others. We do this together. It is a team sport following Jesus. But Jesus sends them out and he tells them exactly how they are supposed to be. Eat and drink what is provided. In other words, don't be fussy. I need to learn that one on occasion. Jesus says, don't move house to house. Or in other wise, I see it as don't try to angle a better deal. Don't be thinking about what's over there. Be present right here. So don't be thinking about your 8 and 10 o'clock service. Just be present now. Eat what is set before you. In other words, mirror the hospitality that is being offered to you in that meal. 
Jesus tells us today that this is what it looks like to spread the gospel message. And yes, we start right here in the pews of St. Cross. So I want you to stop and look around. Like, no, get like Mrs. Kravitz and start looking around. And if you don't know who Ms. Kravitz is, that's okay. Just think of your best nosy neighbor. And look around and keep looking, keep looking. See, Mary Garrett got it. Look, who around you, just think to yourself, who around you do you know? Who around you looks familiar but you can't recall their name? Hmm? A few of those? Yeah, okay. Me every Sunday at the door. Can you find your favorite person who you like to have coffee with when you get over to coffee hour? So I ask you these questions because today... Cameron, you can pay me later for this. Today, when we walk out of here, I hope you all do go to coffee hour, even if just for five minutes. And you're going to find little cards on the table and where you sit, and cards by the donut table, I believe, and they all have a short question on them. Just a short, easy question. Nothing political, nothing religious, just easy answer questions. And this is a challenge for both introverts and extroverts, let's be clear. But the challenge is to take a question and start asking around. Don't be fussy about your question. And don't be fussy about who you do and don't talk to, or who talks to you. Don't try to find better or easier people to talk to. Ask the people you don't know well your question but also ask those who you think you should know, but you don't know as well as you might. Ask the person who made you mad at some point because they sat in your pew, (laughs) or sang off key, or their kids left goldfish in the cushions, which I'm all good with, by the way. And then listen to what the other person has to say just like Jesus is instructing the disciples. And when you're done asking your question, and they're probably going to ask you one back, and you've listened to each other, then you should say, the peace of God be with you. Because that's what Jesus tells the disciples today. And we're doing this for practice. You see, God's peace, when we talk about um, sharing God's peace, it's not tranquility. That's not what God's peace is. God's peace is active. God's peace is resting in God's love. God's peace transpires when two or three are gathered together and we share God's love with one another. So every Sunday, actually, when we come to church and we sit in our pews and we go to coffee hour, that is our practice. You see, it's not just about hospitality here in our own home, right? Did Jesus stay home? I mean, Jesus would have had a much better life if he had just stuck to teaching and healing around the Sea of Galilee. You know, if he had just gone to the places that were familiar and where he knew he and his 12 disciples would be accepted. And remember, there were more than 12 disciples. This is the Gospel of Luke. We have the women, we have all the outcasts. There was way more than 12. He had no problem sending 70 out today. But Jesus didn't just go to the homes where they were sure they would be well received and get their favorite foods. Jesus, every day for us, is like Jesus sending out the 70. And we are to be sent outside of our comfort zones. And we're to go to new places. I hate new places. Ask me about it sometime. But we're to go to new places. We're to talk to new people. We're to have different experiences. Well, that is if we let Jesus send us. That is, if we open up to the fact that we are called to spread God's message. And what does it look like to spread God's message? That's a more challenging question than getting out the door. 
So feel free to take your question homes cards home with you. Feel free to ask random people throughout the week so that you can listen to what they have to say and make connections and enter into hospitality. So what does it look like? What does hospitality look like? Everything, in essence, that we do in church and we think that we try to do in coffee hour. Hospitality can be sharing a meal. It can be listening to someone. How many times have I said that already today, folks? Listening to someone. Learning someone else's story. It can be welcoming someone into your circle. It can be extending yourself into situations that stretch you and your faith. Because like the 70, we need to practice hospitality outside of our church boundaries. We are actually called to go out into the community not as people, not as citizens. We are called to go out into the community as followers of Christ. It's not about bringing people to church. It's about us taking our faith and God's love to people outside of here. Am I right, Deacon Patty? It's the deacon's call. We are to be outside of these walls. And when I say that, I'm not talking about starting a new food ministry, although those are important. I am talking about us as individuals engaging our faith in the wider world. This past week, I was doing a training required by the canons of the church. And I got put into a group with two people who I did not know. And I admit I had a prejudice against one. Mm. It was not the person I wanted to be in a group with. He had a little bit too much excitement about the topic and he kept jumping into answering questions that others had put out there. And I was like, oh great. And yet in this small group, we got to know each other. We asked questions about each other's life and where we were. I actually found out that the other person in the group had interned with my best friend for two years. Had no idea she and I had been in several of these small groups together. And yet, as this man opened up about his life, he snagged my heart with his story. And as we went back and forth and he talked, I asked if I could pray for a situation in his life which isn't always my second nature to go straight to prayer, although that might surprise you. And when I asked him if I could pray for him, he choked up. And then I choked up. And I realized that when even I, who should know better, but when I put my judgment aside, and when I let the peace of Jesus and I let God's love guide me, I was able to listen to this man. I was able to learn his story. I was able to welcome him into my circle and allow me to welcome me into his. And I had to stretch myself to turn off my judgments. And yet this moment was a reminder to me of what can happen when we walk in faith. What can happen when we not just offer hospitality, but accept hospitality, even when we don't want to. So this week, as you go to your picnics and your parties, as you wave at neighbors or grumble about people setting off fireworks, you know you are. I want you to think about how is God calling you to be hospitable to those around you? How is God calling you to spread God's peace and God's love through sharing your story and listening to another person's story and extending you into places that you would not think of going? Listen for where God is sending you and know that when you go, the kingdom of God has come near. Amen.
Let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting that God is already at work within us and within our world, restoring us to the image of God in which we were made, and guided by the perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ. Let us bring our prayers before God, saying, Behold us, your people, and restore us, O God. Inspire in your church its leaders and its people, faithfulness and compassion. May all those who call to be heralds and apostles serve you, the church, and all the world with godliness, love, and joy. Behold us, your people. We pray for leaders of nations, governments, and cities of this world. May all who are in authority use their authority to protect the poor and promote justice. May their hearts, words, and actions be set by your love. Behold us, your people. God, we have had more than enough violence and bloodshed, so let your compassion be swift to meet us. Help us, O God, our Savior, that where there is hatred, fear, or anger, may we bring forth your love, peace, and compassion. Behold us, your people. By your word, O God, You created the heavens and the earth. By your generosity, you continue to cause growth. In your faithfulness, you clothe, protect, and sustain your creation. Give us grace to be for every person an example of your love and source of your peace. Behold us, your people. We pray for all those who suffer and struggle. May they find peace in knowing that you, loving God, draw near to the brokenhearted and comfort the afflicted. We pray that your comfort and healing would come to all in any need or trouble, especially those we name at this time. Behold us your people. We praise you for all the saints, both the famous and the obscure, the ones whom we have known and the ones known only to you. May their memory be a blessing to us, a source of encouragement, strength, and a reminder of your grace. 
We pray for all those dear to us who have departed from this life and for those in mourning, especially those we name at this time. Behold us, your people. to be your people and continue to work in us and in our world that we might be restored in relationship with you and grow in your love. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy God, maker of all, have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, servant of the poor. Have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, breath of life. Have mercy on us. Let us in silence remember our own faults and failings. I confess to God in the company of all God's people that my life and the life of the world are broken by my sin. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. We confess to God and the company of all God's people that our lives and the life of the world are broken by our sin. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Greet one another in a sign of Christ's peace. Good morning. Glad to have you all with us today. Uh, Again, good job on getting here on time. If you are with us online, we also welcome you uh, and look forward to uh, the online community. Uh, and I appreciate when I reach out to people who I haven't seen and they're like, oh no, Reverend Rachel, we're watching online every Sunday. So our greetings to our friends there also. Um, the one thing we need to do is Susan Tucker is going to present uh, the EFM, and if you all don't know what EFM it is, it is our Education for Ministry. It is our four-year study program, and we have a recent graduate this year, and Susan is going to present her with her certificate. Yes, would Julie Spore please come forward? Although, Susan, can I ask you to use the microphone before you present so people can hear you? Sorry, can you, you can go up to Julie. So we're pleased to have Julie with us this morning, who has completed her four years of study, Old Testament, New Testament, church history, and theological choices. A couple weekends ago, we had our festival Eucharist down at St. Paul's Commons, where the entire diocese of graduates was invited to participate. And uh, today, in front of her congregation, we will be presenting her scroll, as well as her alumni pen. <laughs> And definitely come back down for the photo op. But yes, thank you. Yay. Congratulations, Julie. And if you would like to participate in EFM or learn more about it, please find Susan after uh, the uh, service and talk to her. And if you're an EFM graduate, can you just raise your hand? I'm curious how many of you are out there today. Fair amount, pretty good. See, get on it, Miss Kravitz. Start looking around. Good job to all of you. 
Okay, uh, other things that we need to know. The offering plates are up front, so if you don't read your weekly email, you don't know that we are not going to pass the offering plates. You need to bring your offering up to communion and put it in there. I realize we put them between the bread and the wine, so we'll move them next week and they'll be somewhere probably after the wine. Um, so <laughs> we're working it out, folks. Um, so that's A. B. VBS snack and supply sign up. Uh, it is one week until vacation Bible school. So if you would please, please look at those boards and see what you can bring to help us out, especially because our head of vacation Bible school is out with COVID right now. So he could use a little bit of extra support. We're looking forward to him getting healthy really soon. Because otherwise, it's all you, Josh, because... I'm at General Convention in Baltimore for, uh, if you want to know more about our national convention, let me know. Uh, Bite-sized Bible study. I don't know if you're aware, but every Wednesday at noon, you can hop onto a short Zoom. It's 15 to 20 minutes with whoever is preaching that week or Josh, if the preacher is not there. Um, but in essence, to talk about the scripture gospel, the, the gospel reading that we will be reading that week. So if you have 15 minutes at noon and you just want to hear what the priests think or ask a question, you are welcome to join in and see Josh about how to get uh, the Zoom link for that. St. Cross Day. Now, we've done this 9 o'clock service, but we're already planning for St. Cross Day. It will be September 11th. More to come. Keep posted, but also read your weekly emails. We will be closed, of course, tomorrow, July 4th. Sign-ups for Episcopal Dodger Night have started. You can sign up online, and I think we have a QR code also on the door to coffee hour. We hope to have a big group going, as we always do. And last but not least, go to coffee hour, pick up a question card, and get asking. All right. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, creator of us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to the table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you for the food. He took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna. Therefore, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which Jesus died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Send your spirit on us now and these gifts, that by them we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God.
precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I have worn through the storm, through the night. Lead me. Lord, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger here. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry. Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone, Sleep. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the ocean wave be with you. The peace of the ocean breeze surround you. The peace of the quiet earth be in you. The peace of the night stars cover you. The deep peace of the Son of Peace be always with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.